Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of 5 Games 5 Minutes from aconelectron.co.uk Cops and Robbers is based around a bank robbery. You're looking for the plus signs which are meant to be uncut diamonds. These are liberally scattered around the bank and also inside a nearby mine. That's a bit incongruous to begin with, but it gets worse. Inside and outside the bank, you have to avoid police officers or blast them with your gun. If you venture into the mine, however, the police are replaced with Pac-Man-style ghosts. Neither police nor ghosts have a great deal of intelligence. They just sort of mill about. And I've never heard of ghosts being killed by bullets either. Inside the bank, you get lifts and flickering lights to deal with, but they're not enough to distract you from the appalling control system. This game might have worked better if it had an overhead view rather than graphics with a side view as in an overhead maze. It looks very messy. If Cops and Robbers had been released in 1983, then I might cut it a break as an early example of electron programming. But it didn't. It came out in 1990, by which time I think people just laughed it quickly out of existence. When I first saw the inlay for Shanghai Warriors, I imagined it would be a sort of clone of the popular Spectrum beat-em-up Renegade. Ha! I wish. Renegade's quite good. Shanghai Warriors isn't. You're some nameless thug wandering on a monochrome pier where a few undesirables congregate. One or two of them wander up to you and punch you. Or indeed, they punch the air next to you but you still get injured. You never get attacked by more than two of them at a time, and each time you fight back, they retreat all the way to their own corner of the screen. I mean, is this a bug? The way the game works, you seem to have to hit each bloke about ten times to kill him, and he needs to be in his corner of the screen whenever you hit him, or else you have to wait about ten seconds or so for him to wander back over to where you're standing. I mean, please. Please, this isn't a game, it's a bad joke. Some reviewers at the time said at least it had good graphics. Good? They're as lousy as the rest of it. License to Kill is one of the few games which has completely defeated me over the years. Although there are instructions both on screen and in its inlay card, the game itself seems to bear no relation to them. It's not a question of what's wrong with this game, it's a question of what's right about it. Firstly, the graphics. They were so basic I'm just lost for words. Secondly, the sound. Every time you walk in any direction, the electron emits a high-pitched, ear-splitting bleep. Listen up, alternative software. That's not a sound effect. That's just very irritating. Thirdly, the gameplay. As you can see, all the action takes place in just a few pixels worth of space. This means before you've even got time to react to anything on screen, it's already happened. So what can you actually do? Well, you can run left and right, and as long as you get your timing spot on, you can stab anyone who walks towards you. But as for what else to do, how to get through the doors, why there are swastikas everywhere, the significance of the ladder on the left, I have absolutely no idea. Zero out of ten. Shipwrecked is a public domain arcade adventure, fairly traditional means. You can run left and right, jump, go up and down ladders and pick up and use pass cards and other objects to solve puzzles. Jumping is very peculiar and it takes a lot of getting used to. This game is disc only and it's much bigger than many other graphic adventures. However, its graphics fall well short in comparison to its contemporaries. Locations lack imagination and there do seem to be some strange bugs, such as bullets that have already killed aliens remaining on screen and then draining your energy if you run into them later in time. You're looking for six fish keys which need to be picked up and transported one by one to a control room. That's a mission and a half because, unlike in many arcade adventures, doors to which you have a key do not disappear after you unlock them. To even get a single fish home you have to swap your inventory around like crazy. There's nothing particularly bad about Shipwrecked, but of course much better arcade adventures are available. This is Gunfighter an exploration-type cowboy game where you're a sheriff searching for 15 deeds to the town. Each time you find one, another one is randomly placed somewhere on the map. In addition, there are bandits that ride into town and prowl around. You can track them down thanks to the helpful telegrams at the bottom of the screen that tell you where they are. When you kill them, you get a bounty. There are 30 or so different locations which you need to plod through and usually you'll encounter a little problem in doing so. 
You also need to remember to reload your gun by visiting your office from time to time. There's some nice inclusions too, like a saloon where you can gamble, double or quits, with money that you've earned. Although Gunfire is pretty good graphically, there's nothing very really gripping about it. Finding 1D can sometimes take 5 or 6 minutes, so to find 15 of them requires dedication to the game that few players are going to possess. 